In the last two videos, we looked at what people had to say about Leafy's termination from YouTube. Now let's look at what the man himself has to say. Leafy tweets out, Morning Team YouTube, my channel was suspended yesterday. Curious if there's anything I could do to get it reinstated, or if there's any statement on this you could give on this. Adding handles YouTube, Susan Wojcicki, H3H3, YouTube Gaming. Mudahar responds to him by saying, You were my favorite stock slash finance channel of 2020. Dev Aesthetic responds, He helped me get out of a hole. Agree or disagree, he needs to get unbanned. SIE Crimson responds to Leafy by saying, How exactly can YouTube suspend Leafy for essentially no reason, but allow Logan Paul to display a corpse on video, Shane Dawson predate on children, Shane Dawson to make multiple blackface videos, Jeffree Star commit character assassination? Explain YouTube. Bootleg Aiden responds to him by saying, for no reason. Do you even know who you are talking about? Leafy pretty much harasses people for a living. Cinnamon Toast responds, If you watched his recent vids and consider that harassment, you'd need to shut yourself inside your house and never leave it. Henry the White Boy responds to Leafy by saying, I would love to see Leafy come back and try to exist in the landscape, landscape today. Like, like every policy that she adds would never fly on YouTube 2016 and you have to adapt and overcome the fact that like, you can't even cook hair cake now. Like, I don't know. Mez responds to Leafy by saying, We all know who did this, showing a picture of pregnant Ethan and Ela. Satan responds to Leafy by saying, Hashtag free Leafy. Too Mad says, Bruh. Some black guy says, And the simps rejoice. Lessie responds to Leafy by saying, Ha 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 ha! Look how you got humbled suddenly talking like a dude applying for college, lol! Taromi Hearts replies to him by saying, Do you even watch his videos? He's been much nicer and more transparent. He didn't deserve it. TC Consinity responds to her by saying, He made a video getting thousands of fans to spam someone's Discord and piss off their mods. That's not being nicer. Yeetmeister BB responds to him by saying, He did it to show how funny it was that her mods are so sensitive. They literally instantly ban anything that opposes their queen. Antipreze responds to Leafy by saying, H3H3 after snitching be like, Effie says, <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Harris says, You asked for it, buddy. Hopefully, you'll try to be a better man in the future. You get what you fucking deserve! Mars responds, Most of his recent videos were about him just rambling on about random stuff, like his life or economics, but with clickbait titles. Harris responds, You forgot the part where he literally was calling Pokemon ugly and unattractive again and again? I'm shocked why YouTube took so long to take him down. Grand responds, She's not gonna fuck you. Forget about it. Elaine responds to Leafy by saying, You brought this on yourself. God bless and have a good day. Rent responds, How? He was just teaching us how to invest. John Swan replies to Leafy by saying, Can you see if you got any strikes? Should be in YouTube Studio. Leafy responds, Checked emails. Didn't get strike combos. Just suspension. John Swan quote tweets this and says, Confirmed. Leafy didn't receive any strikes, just a straight suspension. He didn't have any community guideline strikes prior to his suspension. Keemstar then tweets out, Leafy interview today on Drama Alert. What up, internet? How you doing? Good morning, everyone. In the, uh, in the words of the great Frankie McDonald, be prepared because today on Drama Alert, we are interviewing Leafy. We're gonna talk about his future. We're gonna talk about what's going on with his channel being terminated. We're probably going to talk about a lot of these content creators that are popping off of the mouth saying he should be banned when they weren't saying anything when he had a channel because he could have potentially responded to them. Uh, so now a lot of people feel really safe to uh, to to attack him, which is pretty like it's pathetic, right? Like you only want to attack a dude once he, he doesn't have a channel. He doesn't have a platform to fight back like pretty pathetic. We're going to talk about that stuff. Um, it should be good. It should be good. Uh, I'm going to record in about an hour or so. And uh, the interview with Leafy will be up earlier today only on Drama. And of course, just like Keemstar said, the interview were released a couple hours later. Keemstar comments on the performance of this video when he tweets out, I'm pretty sure my Leafy interview was being suppressed. 10 out of 10. No way. Showing that in the first three hours, his video only got 400k views, which is very, very bad for Drama Alert standards. The worst out of his last 10 videos. Willie Mac show comments on the interview by saying, Keemstar is a super polarizing figure in my book, but this shit is why we need him. He actually helps people out that get fucked. 
So many other good guy content creators just pretend like they don't see anything. Hashtag GG Keem. In the interview with Keemstar, Leafy said he would be uploading on Storyfire, and to coincide with this, Storyfire made their official announcement tweet that says, Super pumped to announce that Leafy has officially joined Storyfire. Very unfortunate to see his channel get terminated. So now he has a home on the fire. Be sure to subscribe to him, drop him some blaze, and leave a hiss on his latest social post. Speaking of that Storyfire post, it says, Bro, YouTube is shit. Laughing my fucking ass off. Ah, the first laughing my fucking ass off for a Storyfire post. Feels good. Hopefully I'm able to read more Storyfire posts in the future if drama goes down there. But either way, going back to Twitter, Leafy made a video with the caption, Night survived. 143. You know, I, I would love, people saying, oh, Leafy, come back. I would love to see Leafy come back and try to exist in the landscape today. Like, Belle Delphine decided to give her support to Leafy when she tweeted out, My opinion and complimentary picture. Thank you, kind sir. Her post says, I've had a lot of commentary videos made about me, and personally, I don't care. I think free speech and not having to censor your commentary or opinions is important. It's tough and it hurts sometimes, but it's the internet. I can understand why YouTube and people don't like Leafy, but I think a warning before a straight ban is something we'd all like to have. Too Mad responds to her by saying, Leafy called me the word. Kark responds to her by saying, tips only fans, my lady. Now wait a second, Kark, wait a second. Before you tip, before you simp, where is that money coming from? Where is that credit card stored? It better be in the Ridge wallet, because not having a Ridge wallet for your credit card is like not having a Bell Delphine condom for your cock. You need to make sure your credit card has the best protection. And the best way to do that is to get a Ridge wallet. It's super sturdy, made of metal, never breaks, and if it somehow does, there's a 45 day money back guarantee as well as a lifetime warranty. There's over 30 styles and colors to choose from and it holds up to 12 cards. In my opinion, there's no reason to not try out this wallet. So if you're in the market for one, go to ridge.com slash boblax and use code boblax for 10% off your order. Thank you so much to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Belle Delphine wasn't the only OnlyFans creator to talk about Leafy's ban. Anisa Jama, who is iDub's girlfriend for those of you who don't know, tweeted out, Freedom of speech coomers are out here thinking you can call your mom a whore at your place of work with zero consequences. Companies are allowed to have rules and limits on how they want people to conduct themselves. Freedom of speech protects you from the government, not from getting fired. Wooly One responds to Anisa by saying, Yes, Anisa, that's what monetization rules are for. In your real life metaphor, you would lose your job. You don't get blown off the fucking planet for it. Turkey Tom responds to her by saying, too bad YouTube is owned by Google, a company that stretches across the world and has influence unlike any other organization. It controls the information we see, the information we share, and the information we don't know even exists. Willie Mac responds to her by saying, laughing my ass off, dude thinks social media is the same thing as working a corporate job. The point of social media is to speak your mind, and if you don't like it, you can always leave. She continues tweeting about the situation when she says, I'm convinced people who cry freedom of speech when someone gets fired slash terminated has never worked a real job in their life. Willie Mac show quote tweets her and says, says the OnlyFans girl. Not to mention she fucking dates iDubs. Laughing my ass off, shut the fuck up already. Nick DiOrio responds, She's lucky Idubs only lost his video from the chin jokes, and not his entire channel, Glass Houses. Nick then quote tweets her and says, Your current income source consists of selling half-naked pictures of yourself to losers. He then replies to her and says, Is real job the name of your next drop of softcore porn on OnlyFans.com slash Annie J? Or do you think I only started working at the ripe age of 26? I've been in the workforce since I was 13, the legal working age in Canada. 
So it's odd to assume I just didn't work until I made an OnlyFans? Nicholas Diorio responds, It seems like you went down the appropriate path in life, considering you can't comprehend the difference between a traditional job and a social media platform. Weird hearing the bullying argument coming from the content cop's girlfriend. Anisa responds, I worked in a movie theater and as a server. I worked retail and as a server before I made any type of name for myself online at 21. But okay. Cutgrass responds, so just high school jobs? How many labor jobs have you worked? She responds, one, landscaping for a summer. Toxic Mail Clips responds to her by saying, you missed the point where you said you were okay with Ian doing it, but get mad at Leafy. Seems like double standard. Should Ian be banned as well for bullying and using racist terms? Anisa responds, no. If Ian continued to make content that wasn't seen as acceptable in YouTube's eyes, and he got banned, I wouldn't cry freedom of speech. I'd be sad for him and support him, but I wouldn't claim it wasn't within YouTube's right. Toxic Mail Clips responds, Well, he did it, and therefore he should be banned if you were carrying that logic about Leafy as the content is still up on Ian's channel. The videos all should be removed by your standard, or he hasn't owned it and bettered himself. Anisa responds, Well, that's a bridge we will have to cross if we come to it. Repsion responds to Anisa's original tweet by saying, Not gonna generalize everyone with a tweet like that. But I definitely think people don't understand the difference between freedom of speech versus freedom of consequences of what you say, and how it affects future jobs, brand deals, etc. Nick responds by saying, For example, starting an OnlyFans after a faulted Twitch career could cause a consequence that affects future employment. Hale Cian asks Anisa, Are you for free speech? To which Anisa responds, I'm for free speech in the government sense. And I'm also for companies having the right to fire people for not representing their brand properly. Nineveh responds to Anisa by saying, Okay, but are we going to take advice on philosophical topics from a whore? Anisa responds, Sure, why not? If it's valid. Why do ogres assume I don't work before the ripe age of 27? You think I just didn't work and opened an OnlyFans? Delusional. If Ian ever got removed from YouTube for his Content Cop series, it would be unfortunate. But it's YouTube's right to do that. Ian made choices to take risks by making edgy content just as I have making an OnlyFans. I still hold the same opinion regardless. That's life. It's not a gotcha to ask me this question. It's just life. Cavos quote tweets her and says, Idub's girlfriend doesn't even simp for him after all that OnlyFans drama. Patrol Patches says, He paid for your boob job and this is how you repay him? Smidge Brick says, Imagine sticking up for a platform that treats its creators like shit when your boyfriend is a creator. Yeah, not really helping the iDubs is a simp argument at all. This woman seems like a gold digger who has squeezed whatever she could out of her man. I'm betting they break up within the year. Willie Mac Show says, If YouTube wanted to nuke everything and only allow midget wrestling, they could do that. But that's not reasonable, sensible, or rational. Ma says, How many more ways can this woman cuck iDubs? I'm legit impressed. Topher responds to Anisa by saying, Ian's Content Cop is a one and done series, where he throws out his criticisms alongside a few dumb jokes, and moves on with his life. Leafy made like 12 videos harassing one person. Anisa responds, I agree. I'm just stating that YouTube isn't its right to remove content creators who don't comply with their TOS. That's it. Buck Fucko responds to her by saying, doesn't mean you have to fucking like it. I have zero time for Leafy, and I couldn't care less about his termination. But this attitude I see online anytime YouTube does something that makes people mad, of just be quiet guys, the corporation is allowed to do this, is fucking weak. Anisa responds, I didn't say you have to like it, I said it's their right. Another Pikachu responds to Anisa by saying, I bet if your OnlyFans got banned, she will not have this kind of argument. Anisa responds, I would, yes. If my OnlyFans got banned, they would have the right to do that. It's their site. Gad responds to her by saying, Just because it's their site doesn't mean what they do is right. You don't have to agree with every single thing they do just because it's a private company. Anisa responds, I didn't say it was right. I said it's their right. Companies don't usually care about morals over money. Gad responds, Like I said, just because it's their company, it shouldn't give them a pass to shit on their community. PussVagine69 responds to Anisa by saying, I can't wait to revel in your future deplatforming, Anisa Jama. Going to be one of the best things YouTube does. Anisa responds, I don't really use it, so go ahead. Cameron responds to her by saying, 
It just sucks because it's a good series of videos. And I hope that now that he's working towards doing more positive content like the documentaries, he will be able to stay on YouTube. I think that YouTube does have a right to take stuff down, but I think they also need to listen. Aniza responds, I agree 100%. Robot596 responds to Aniza by saying, So you don't care that one of the biggest things your boyfriend has ever done gets removed? Aniza responds, I do care. I never said I don't. I'm very passionate about what he's done and who he is, but I'm also aware what the reality is of taking risks and behaving in a way the company contracting him and many others may not like. That's just the reality of things. Digo responds to Aniza by saying, just because it's YouTube's right doesn't make it right. Yet another trash take. Aniza responds, I never said it was morally right. Digo responds, no, but it shows a clear bias towards edgy content. We shouldn't be so accepting to YouTube just up and deleting channels because they don't like the content. Aniza responds, You don't have to be okay with it. I just want people to not be surprised that a private company is going to choose money over everything, and they have no obligation to do otherwise. Spade Slick responds to Aniza by saying, Bow down to the corporation that has a monopoly on video content. Smart. Aniza responds, I didn't say bow down. I said it's their right, and maybe as a collective, people should wake up and realize how scary it is that we rely on one site for video format media sharing. Spades responds, but we know. That's exactly why people are complaining. And in the midst of it all, you are over here like, that's life. It's the right to take down Ian's content, which obviously reads as supporting the current situation. Aniza responds, it is their right. And that is life. That's how life is set up. Private companies don't care about moral correctness. They want money. So don't expect more out of YouTube. Vote with your dollar slash view and collectively talk about solutions rather than bitch about the trash company. It serves no benefit to anyone other than YouTube to whine freedom of speech at them. They only care about money, and they have the right to remove whoever. We have a major problem pretending private companies are free spaces. They aren't. She then makes a tweet that says, No one's stopping you guys from making your own edgy video sharing service, where everyone's telling each other to kill themselves, but no one's stopping ad companies from saying, I don't want to fund this either. Nikki Red responds to her by saying, This is such a bad take. Talk about being naive. Mexico Man responds, All you guys are missing the point. It's so sad. Please explain how it's a bad take. Nikki Red responds, Seriously? Just go make your own YouTube? You think that's a good take? Laughing my ass off. And then the ads. No one's stopping them. Really? Lol, because I seem to remember several sponsors dropping like flies the minute a blue checkmark cries boo. Aniza responds, yeah, that's their choice. Joe Mama responds to Aniza's tweet by saying, just build your own YouTube. To which Aniza responds, no, build your own social media sharing platform that isn't for the purpose of making money or one of the many platforms available like 4chan, Kiwi Farms, Reddit, Venmo probably to share ideas and info you want. Joe Mama responds to her by saying, Alternative media sharing platforms don't have anywhere near a comparable audience to YouTube. I really don't think a platform that big should have every decision they make respected because it's their right as a company. Aniza responds, Welcome to the plutocracy that is our life. Money makes things important. The market drives what society is and does. Fluid responds to Aniza by saying, Hope OnlyFans starts censoring its creators and hits your front door. Maybe then you will see you are on the wrong side of history. Aniza responds, If the money decides my market isn't viable and switches directions, I will try my best to adjust. If I can't, then that's how it goes. That's business. Fireblades responds to Aniza's make your own site tweet by saying, No one's stopping you guys from making your own edgy video service. Oh sure, let me just grab my million dollars to make it. Aniza responds, yeah, that's my point. To which Cum Chalice responds, your point is retarded. Blue Firefee responds to Aniza by saying, it seems like the open platform and creators that brought the viewer base that's given YouTube its value are being completely disregarded now that the audience has been built. Aniza responds, yes it does, but sadly, that's what money does. Aniza follows up her original tweet by saying, it's sad how many people are missing the point of this tweet. To which Jacobson responds, your point sucks. Aniza responds to him by saying, My point that money runs everything, and that you are allowed to say what you want but in the plutocracy we live in, if you aren't playing by the rules of the company you aren't allowed on the court? Jacobson responds, You are correct. But when you have certain policy steps you were supposed to take as a private company, and don't take those steps, then it starts to get very sinister. I will also add that when everyone is applauding that, it sets a bad precedent for more of it to happen in the future. What is edgy to one person is not edgy to another. Everything is subjective at that point. Thickums responds to Aniza's missing the point tweet by 
saying, It's sad how naive you are to think that people can just make their own YouTube. Aniza replies, I didn't say I did. I said just as it's your right to make a platform, it's investors and ad companies' right to not want to support it. You have a fundamental problem with capitalism and not being paid for saying what you want. Thickums then reposts Aniza's tweet. And she responds by saying, That's right, you can. You just won't monetize it unless you find investors, just like anything else. Thiggums responds, In a time where YouTube is worth at minimum billions of dollars, which do you think would be the smarter place to put your money into? YouTube or edgy commentary tube? Aniza responds to him by saying, Yes, welcome to the issue of living in a plutocracy. You are allowed to be upset about it. You should do something about it by supporting creators on other sites and fighting against the machine. I'm just stating the reality of things. Codeine Crazy responds to Aniza with a photoshop of her kissing the boot, which is YouTube. Aniza responds to him by saying, I don't think you realize I'm just pointing out problems in the reality of complete capitalism and monopolies. Thickums responds, Alright, fair enough. But judging by the firestorm, doesn't really seem like a good time to be like, my capitalism bad. You know? Aniza responds, It's always a good time to talk about and make people aware of how little control we have on platforms and that it isn't a public space like real life. We forget it all the time and it's dangerous. Codeine Crazy responds to Aniza by saying, The problem is that rather than actively fighting against these problems and censorship, you just turn a blind eye to it and accept it. Aniza responds, I don't accept it. I'm attempting to point out the actual problem and why it's not good to think you are protected by free speech when it comes to these private companies online. It's dangerous to think we have free anything on money-making businesses. Jose responds to Aniza by saying, Well, I don't think any creator is entitled to ad revenue, but wasn't the issue at hand free speech? Aniza responds, If YouTube is a money-making business and they are worried about ads being pulled and their perception as a brand, they are legally allowed to pull whatever they wish off their site. The thing we should be talking about is the monopoly that is YouTube and how to fix it. You fix it by following me on Storyfire. Anyways, Mark responds to Aniza's missing the point tweet by saying, Ian essentially threw away everything he built in order to show support for you. But when it comes to you supporting for Ian, your response is, that's life. What? Aniza responds, I have complete support for him in what he does. But I just stated a fact that it's YouTube's right as a private company to choose what it wants on its site. It has no moral obligation. Same with OnlyFans. I didn't say I think he deserves it. I don't know why people think that. I just want people to wake up and realize that YouTube isn't a free space. It's a business and crying freedom of speech isn't the right convo to have. It's why there's such a monopoly and why we have let it get this bad while pretending anyone has a legal right to be on the site. Aniza then tweets out, A lot of you guys are extrapolating things I never said in my previous tweet. I said we are aware of the risks that come with the career paths we choose, and it's YouTube's right to uphold a TOS. Not that I don't support my significant other, and that I would be singing sea chanties if he got banned. MK responds to her by saying, I swear, people take everything you say out of context. Aniza then responds, It's always how it goes. I swear. And that's about it for what people had to say about Leafy's termination. But there has been an update in regards to it, and I'll be covering that in the next video. So if you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe with notifications on, and follow my Twitter to see my takes on the drama. Thank you so much to my channel members for supporting the channel, in particular Alexis, Pescator, Astemic, The Dank Memes Play, Forever Ghoul, Turtle, and Auzorich for $30 a month. Rubybox Fox for $40 a month, and Boar for $50 a month. Your donations mean a lot to me, it helps my channel immensely. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in another video.